it's not uncommon for bands to sign horrible recording contracts that literally leaves them penniless. Sometimes this happens because the musicians don't read the contract or get legal advice, or worse, they're so desperate for a deal they'll literally do anything. This best describes the situation that Goo Goo Dolls found themselves in the late 80s and early 90s. Goo Goo Dolls' story dates back to 1986 when they were founded in Buffalo, New York. The band started when bassist Robbie Takak, who was a young disc jockey, met a plumbing trainee named Johnny Resnick and drummer George Tatuska. The group's early albums saw them incorporate pop, metal, and punk influences into their sound, and the band's first record deal they would sign would be with Metal Blade Records, which mostly housed heavy metal acts including Slayer, Gwar, and King Diamond. The band signed with them in 1987. As part of the band's deal with Metal Blade, the band's albums would be distributed through Warner Brothers, including the band's breakthrough record 1995's A Boy Named Goo, which would go on to sell 2 million copies on the strength of the single name. Despite the band's commercial success, they barely saw any money from their CD sales. Resnick would tell the LA Times in 1998, It was our fault. I don't blame anyone but myself for the stupid things I did when I was a kid. We didn't give a damn about any of that stuff at the time. We just wanted to make records. I mean, record companies sell you a dream, but sometimes that dream can be pretty expensive, he'd say. Each band member would only receive $6,000 from their label, but that was it. In order to keep themselves afloat and avoid going bankrupt, the band had to tour relentlessly for 18 months and live off ticket and merch sales. That tour saw the band playing alongside Bush and No Doubt. Side note guys, I've done a whole video on the history of the band Bush, the link is down below. But the band didn't enjoy themselves on tour with Robbie Takak telling an interviewer that being on that tour was, not I quote, having a dentist enter through your ass to pull your wisdom teeth out. Despite having a hit record and playing with some well-known acts on the road, the band members were still stuck in the same tax bracket. Takak would tell an interviewer, I thought about carving Slave into my face, alluding to Prince's bizarre protest of his label Warner Brothers several years prior. The extensive touring had a detrimental effect against guitarist and vocalist Johnny Resnick, who suffered from writer's block when it came time to write the group's follow-up record, Dizzy Up the Girl. Resnick would look back at the difficulty of spending nearly two years on the road telling the LA Times, Being out on the road that long screws your head. It's like living on a land submarine. You wake up and it's Thanksgiving morning and you go, where the hell am I? For a long time after that tour, I just felt stupid, he'd say. Resnick would enlist the help of producer Rob Cavallo and a writer named Jill Cooper to help him beat his writer's block. Cooper was well versed in the relationship between music and psychology, and in November of 1996, the band decided they've had enough of their record label and filed a lawsuit against Metal Blade, wanting out of their contract. The lawsuit would claim that Metal Blade made millions off of the group and signed the band to, and I quote, a grossly unfair, one-sided, and unenforceable contract. On top of that, Goo Goo Dolls gave a legal notice to Metal Blade claiming they would be no longer recording for the label and that they would enter discussions with other record companies. Things got even more complicated when Warner Brothers, the label's distributor, turned around and sued the band, claiming that they were talking to other labels while still under contract. Goo Goo Dolls' lawsuit would claim that the band was receiving a royalty rate of 8% of the suggested retail price of a CD. The average royalty rate for an artist at the time was around 30%. The Buffalo News would report that after accounting for expenses including producer royalties and other related costs, the band made about 25 cents for every $13 CD that was sold. The band's lawsuit contended that their label Metal Blade was, and I quote, no different than a common bootlegger. Johnny Resnick would comment on the lawsuit to the Buffalo News at the time, revealing, it's a matter of principle. I can't make any more music for free, it's sake. For their part, Metal Blade would issue a statement with their CEO Brian Slagle claiming, Metal Blade has supported the Goo Goo Dolls for eight years. We've lived up to all our contractual obligations. It's unfortunate that the Goo Goo Dolls have a desire to litigate. The band's legal woes would drag on for about half a year before the parties went their separate ways, with the band winning their lawsuit and getting their freedom. They would sign a more favorable deal with Warner Brothers, and according to Diffuser.fm, the band was given a substantial advance by Warner ahead of Dizzy Up the Girl coming out, and it took the band several years to pay the label back despite the album being a massive hit. The band's legal woes and money issues didn't end there. Both the group's original drummer George Tatuska and his replacement Michael Malinin would be involved with royalty and payment disputes with the band. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll Stories. Take care.